Yeah, so of course in here we've got the theatre room. Uh, yes, come in, come in, come in, come in, please. Let me just close this because the dogs, they don't like people, they're very noisy. So this is the theatre room. If you've, you've never seen it before, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, even if you did, it changes every once in a while. Sometimes I'll get new films, so I'll change up the shelf. Sometimes I'll just rearrange it completely. Like, I once did a what, theater room tour, like an official theater room tour on my uh, YouTube channel. And, like, it was about two years ago, but I'm pretty sure last time I did it, I had all the Blu-rays on the top and all the DVDs on the bottom. So, like, it's completely changed since then. Like, the whole left-hand side now is Blu-rays, mixture of Blu-ray 4K, and on the right hand side you've got the DVDs, it just, it kind of keeps evolving, so obviously you've got the whole entire room, you've got the shelf, you've got the TV, I've got a uh, step ladder here, it's usually in the laundry, but you know, I've been redecorating again, putting some new box sets up the top, so I just kind of had it in here as of last night, so I can put it away later if you want me to, it's no real bother. Um, of course you've got the TV, uh, you've got the uh, AV box and the Blu-ray player and all that. I'll, I'll get more into that in a later part. So we'll, we'll focus on the shelf for now. <laughs> I know. There's a whole 360 degree. We're going to get to it. So the shelf itself. This is the main attraction for a lot of people. Um, and honestly, this is... I'd, I'd call it my baby as like that kind of thing of like, you know, I, I this is my thing. This is what I've been spending my life doing. It's like, I haven't. That would be kind of absurd. Uh, no, I just like collecting films. Um, obviously it comes down to, are there rules? Are there formats? How does it work? Uh, well, in simple nature, it's an alphabetical from A to Z. Uh, there are a few delineations, mostly, um, the, the, the word the, I don't count as a word that starts a sentence. I, I can never remember what the grammatical term for it is. So anything that has a the at the start goes to a later part in the actual shelf. My only uh, disdain for that, so for example, you've got uh, the mule and the mummy down here, not to mention the mummy on 4K, like this is a new thing I've got and I haven't been able to put it in the shelf yet, but I'm not going to call it the, and then you look for the, it's mummy. So you just look for mummy, comma, the, you know, simple as that. So something that I'm still a bit iffy on is the letter A, uh, stuff like a, a cure for wellness is under cure for cure for wellness. But something like a quiet place is under a quiet place, not under quiet place. So I'm still haven't worked those out yet. I don't know which I prefer. I just kind of do it as I do it. I think it depends on the film. Sometimes it's because I have to share this with my family as well. So they have to be able to find the films themselves. So if it comes to a film like A Quiet Place, I know that my mum would look for A Quiet Place. So I'd leave it up for A for A Quiet Place. Whereas if I was looking for, if I was looking for a cure for wellness, I'd go for a cure for wellness. I don't know, I might change it again soon. It, it, it depends on my mood most of the time. Um, but then, of course, we've got little collections as well. Uh, most films that have franchises have their own selections. We've got, like, it starts with Alien... Uh, but then you've got, like, director selections as well, because, of course, I'm very pedantic like that. So you've got uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, then you've got Wes Anderson. Uh, I don't have P.T. Anderson there yet for some reason. Um, I feel like I should, just for, the f just for the heck of it, but I only have... Uh... Shit, what's the films? I've got Monster Hunter and the Resident Evil films. He didn't direct all the Resident Evil films, but I do have them in a box set, so I feel like I could put them up there. That's probably not a bad idea. Nevertheless, then you've got stuff like Dario Argento, uh, and you've got David Attenborough, so of course going by surnames here, so of course Anderson Anderson does make it a bit confusing, but... <clears throat> Excuse me, it does make it a bit confusing, but it is what it is. But then you get some more abstract things. You've got Batman, which is like the TV show plus the 90s films and the animated series, but not Batman v Superman, which is in the DC selection further on because that's my DCEU selection, just because I have so many of those films now that I figured I might as well put them in a selection now because uh, I guess I hate myself or something. I don't know. But like I've also got even more obscurities like Mario Bava. Uh, so... You know, Dario Argento, David Lynch, I've got a whole Disney selection, but it's Disney slash Pixar, and it's all animated. None of it's live action. Uh, so, you know, there's that. 
Uh, of course, there's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You've got well, the obvious ones like Mission Impossible, all down in one slot as Mission Impossible. Uh, Christopher Nolan. Uh, Spielberg is a new one. Uh, I'm collectively grabbing more films of his, so that's always fun. Uh, even down at the very end, it ends with Rob Zombie. So it just ends with a zombie with... Uh, what, what films are they? You've got... Oh, I mean, it starts with Zombieland and Zombieland 2, but they're obviously not his films. But then you've got, like, House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects. But then you've got the 20, 2007 Halloween film and Lords of Salem. Uh, I'm yet to get more of his films. I've watched all of his films anyway, but... Except for Free From Hell, I just can't find the time to watch it half the time. But that's, a, that's a Netflix issue, anyway. Um, and, like, in terms of more specifics, I have, like... Sergio Leone, I've got... I mentioned David Lynch, didn't I? Uh, I've got Scorsese as well. Um, Akira Kurosawa. Uh, I even have the two Jodorowsky films right next to each other just because I have El Topo on the Holy Mountain. I don't know. Um, I mean, no one's going to look for them. If I want to watch a Jodorowsky film, I know where to watch them. They're right there. Uh, but then other ones, like, I've got Monsterverse, but they're not really Monsterverse, because I've got King Kong in one section, including the original through to Kong Skull Island. But then I've got Godzilla, which is 98 through to uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. And I'll be getting the 90, uh, 1984 film as well, because that film's so hard to get on DVD or Blu-ray, I got it on Blu-ray. So, in terms of how it's changed, it, you know, it's... God, I even got John Carpenter and Jackie Chan. All right, I've got a lot of selections. I used to have a, a list, but I uh, those got outdated really, really quickly. So I just kind of threw them out, and uh, they've mostly fell off the actual uh, side of the wall there. But you know, it is what it is. Um, I don't think I have any other selections. Again, there are a hell of a lot. There's Dil uh, Denis Villeneuve. I've even got Vin Diesel as a selection under Vin. Because that sounds cooler than Diesel. <laughs> I don't know. It's just down at the bottom there. So, And that, of course, includes all the Fast and Furious films. Um, I've got Quentin Tarantino. Uh, yeah, no, it's... it's. Um, I've even got a Hitchcock selection as well that I'm slowly building. Because they're releasing a lot of his films on 4K. I do have a box set at the top. Oh, yeah, should I get into box sets? Because Blu-ray is one thing. Not to mention how my... Uh, I'm running out of space so often that I'm filling up on the tops as well, which is a very DVD-esque thing that I'm doing. I've got some spares around there because I haven't slotted them in yet. I'm getting there. The adventure as well. My God, there are so many. Anyway, if I have a TV show, uh, I will put the first season at the front and the whatever other seasons behind because the slot is like two uh, Blu-rays like cases deep. So realistically, if I wanted to, I'd stack them all like that and maybe have the small list, but then even I think that'll get way too confusing, but we'll see how it goes whenever I fill this thing up. Oh yes, that would be the uh, heater. We've got a heating vent right there, which I l try to close it when I'm watching a film, but there's no real point because if it, if it closes fully, it makes a whistling sound, which is terrible. Um, but if it, because it doesn't close fully, it like has two flaps that go down. One of them stays up, which makes it even louder because you've got a lot of hot air whacking against hard plastic. So it makes it noisier. So we've just left it open. Mum usually puts in like a washing that needs to be dried during the winter period, like it is currently. Uh, so that helps to dry it out, which is, you know, convenient, especially for someone like me who works uh, three, four days a week. So I need work clothes washed every day, pretty much. Uh, but during the cooler season, the hotter season, we've got the uh, air conditioner there, which I obviously prefer because it's a fuck ton quieter. Um, but still, it is what it is. Uh, what can I say? Um, oh, I do have a fan as well, just in case. Because this room can get really stuffy, uh, especially if you've got multiple people in. Good kind of a room for a party or for having a theatre, you know, a movie sh screening. But at the same time, it gets really hot in here. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, what else can I say about the shelf? At the top, obviously, you have uh, the... Shit, you got a lot of shit at the top, let's be honest with you. Like... I don't even know how to characterize the top yet, but pretty much it starts from, from the top left you've got, uh, well, the very, very top, of course, is box sets. You've got Richmond, you've got Gamera, 
you got a whole bunch of classic TV shows from sci-fi with Star Trek and Fringe, then you got Frasier and Friends, and two Clint Eastwood box sets, The Sound of Music, uh, Angel, and my Buffy set usually lives up there, but I'm watching that show currently. Uh, Torchwood, Looney Tunes, Fantasia lives there as well, that's the, that's the uh, limited edition VHS set that my dad got so long ago that he didn't even remember getting it, and we only realized we had it once we moved here back in, what, 2018? Yeah, so we've been here three years now, and it only took us like a year after we moved here to, that we unboxed the final box which had that, and I was like, oh my god, what the hell is this? It's not too much of a rarity. It's Some people still like sell on eBay, but not for much. But it's it's a cute little thing for a VHS collection. Um, I've got my Universal Monsters Essentials box, Dawn of the Dead, uh, Parks and Recreation, James Bond, the Dexter box set, which is one of my favorite box sets, but I've hardly rewatched the show since high school. And they're all DVDs anyway, which is pathetic. I'd prefer a Blu-ray of the show. It is what it is. I was a DVD person before I was a Blu-ray person. Um, and then I've got Braveheart and Vikings, but that's like a documentary show. That's like the stuff I bury at the end. Nobody really looks there. Uh, but then, of course, Below the Frog, who I still don't remember what his name is, but he's a... I think he's mine, actually, to be fair. I don't know, a childhood thing. You've got the VHS selection. A new edition there is Creature on a Black Lagoon. I know, weird to say a new edition for a VHS collection, but it is what it is. The rest I've had since childhood, the classic King Kong, the Star Wars trilogy, the Simpsons, H.I. Puff and stuff. Then you move through and you've got some more boutique boxes and whatever, as well as some various pop finals, you know, the uh, Arrow video selection, plus those 4K steelbooks for Back to the Future, and the Dracula pop vinyl, because why not? I mean, what else am I going to put there? Another film? There's no room. Then, of course, you've got more Arrow video, uh, you've got Titans of Cult, some Eureka Cinema. These are all basically empty boxes. Everything that's inside them, like in terms of a disc case, is somewhere on the shelf. If I already had a version, I would have replaced the shelf. So I say like, Tremors, I already had the Blu-ray, so I put the 4K down in Tremors section, you know, down in the letter T, but I put the Blu-ray in the Tremors box, that kind of deal. Um, but then you got Hitchcock, you got some Indiana Jones, the Hitchcock pop vinyl. The next one is a very expensive shelf. Uh, you got The Thing, the Turbine set, which is very, very rare, and was quite expensive. Um, then you've got the World of Wonka Y, which is the Criterion set, uh, A Trip to the Moon, the uh, Arrow video set, well, Arrow Academy in this case, and the Seinfeld box set. That one ain't ra rare, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, more VHS in the next one. You've got Gone with the Wind. Then you just got some random ones, you know, Dark Knight Trilogy, because it's a landscape you know, gift set. I hate it, but uh, it's, it's how my parents introduced me to the trilogy because they bought me the gift set for my birthday in like 2013, I think. Um, the Grindhouse set because I, I love Tarantino and Rodriguez films. I don't love all of Rodriguez's films, but enough. Obviously, there's followed by the Sin City and Sin City 3D, Damn to Kill 4. They're just limited edition sets. Um, then, of course, Twin Peaks from Z to A, one of my mo more prized possessions uh, with the uh, Twin Peaks pops on the top. Uh, you've got the Daria set, um, the Godfather, Chucky, Hayao Miyazaki, that one's a wonderful set. Uh, plus some other four that I haven't really found places for. The Willy Wonka one, I've swapped out the Blu-ray and put the 4K down in the Willy Wonka selection. Um, but then like Millennium Actress and Paranoia Agent, I want to make a Satoshi Kon section, but they're quite big. I, it's hard to find the space and the room for them. And then The Sting, just because it's that classic film, I should probably find a better spot for it so it's more accessible if I ever want to watch it, but you know, it is what it is. The next three booths are all full of steel books. These are random ones I've collected throughout the years, a lot of them very recently, uh, not to mention, of course, the Mondo steel books. Uh, most of them are in protectors, even the Mondo ones, because I like to be protective of my steel books, um, which is cool in my mind, I think. Some of them have just plastic slips because that's how I got them, or I just happen to have some extra ones from buying ones on eBay. And I didn't really think that they needed to be in protectors properly. But I've also been waiting for a restock on eBay, which did finally come in. So that will be coming in the mail soon. Moving on, we've got DVD, Blu-ray, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, One Herzog, that Watchmen set that comes with the comic book because I think it's cool. Um, doesn't uh, It comes with a director's cut on like DVD, which is really disappointing because that's a hard film to get on Blu-ray. 
Uh, then you got The Office and Thunderbirds and The X Files, including the uh, later two seasons. Um, and then some extra box sets, which were for the 4Ks. They did these special releases for these, for a few 4Ks from JB, but they were really shitty sets. Like, they were really long. Um, half of it was just filled with styrofoam. But you got the 4K of the film and a booklet. And the booklet was, I think, good for Gladiator and Saving Private Ryan because it actually told you, had interviews with the director and stuff, but the Terminator one was a piece of shit. It was just images from the film. So that was a waste of money. But uh, I think I've got them all on sale anyway, so, you know, uh, you know. Um, furthermore, you've got uh, the premium selection um, down here with more steelbooks next to it. So they're all my, you know, Manta Lab, Everything Blue, uh, the, you know, HD Zeta, uh, Film Arena, that kind of stuff. Same as the next slide. I'm still trying to figure it out because I'm waiting for the protectors to come in before I can reset the whole thing. But yeah, I like to have the ones that I can display better so I can swap them out, put them on like a piano, back and forth. And then you've got the DVDs all in alphabetical order to some degree. You've got stuff like Doctor Who, which takes up a lot of space, but uh, until I need to move it, I will leave it as it is, you know, but we mostly prioritise Eccleston and uh, David Tennant's uh, runs. I don't have all of David Tennant's runs on the DVDs here because I have two steelbooks, which are actually my brother's, which are pretty cool. So that's like the Doctor Who specials of David Tennant plus the uh, 50th anniversary because uh, they sell out quickly most of the time. But yeah, most of it for the most part is just more DVDs. Uh, there's no real specifics to it, I think. Uh, I mean, there's Hitchcock again, but for the most part the DVDs are just kind of their own thing. There's John Wayne selection, a lot of The Simpsons as well down the bottom, but yeah. It's just nice to have them all in physical media for the most part. So that's my main treasure of this is having them all in physical media. Obviously, I've buried a lot of spare DVDs and extra TV shows that have multiple seasons behind where they actually are. Like, if you were to look behind uh, Doctor Who here or even the Godzilla sets, you'd see so many extra spare DVDs. So most of them because we've got duplicates. But the duplicates I've usually purchased... So they're my Blu-rays and or 4Ks, whereas the DVDs are my parents, but I don't need them to be on a DVD shelf if I want my content to be watched. Like, if I want speed to be watched, I'm not going to get them to watch the bloody DVD. I'm going to put the 4K and get them to watch the 4K. So I've just buried a lot of them back there. Some of them, I think, eventually my parents will want me to sell off, but, you know, it's slow traffic these days when it comes to selling stuff. But anyway, let's look at, like, the TV and stuff and get them more, I don't know, Friendly look at that, yeah. So, there really isn't much to it. Um, obviously, uh, step ladder, uh, <laughs> the fan. It usually lives in the shed, but we just kind of leave it there now because we've got enough room for the rest of it. Um, the obvious stuff that isn't mine is pretty much the exercise bike. Uh, we moved that in here once we, my mum got an elliptical and. It hasn't moved. I don't like that it's in here, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, the TV is a 65-inch 4K TV. Uh, oh, maybe it's 55-inch. I'm pretty sure it's 65 and we've got a 75-inch out in the lounge room, or it's a 55 and we've got a 65 out in the lounge room. I don't really remember, but it was as big as I needed to at the time. I bought it before we even moved here. Um, and I couldn't set it up until we moved here, but, of course, it's connected to the wall. You got the AV player, which is a Denon. Uh, I can never remember what it's called. Um, the AVR X140 1400H, because of course I'm going to remember what the uh, specs are of my systems. I'm not that tech savvy, let's be honest here. Um, I've got my Sony, which is <laughs> excuse me. Uh, I've got I've got my remote here. This is the uh, I don't know if that actually helps, the RMT VB201D. Oh, that might just be the serial number for the goddamn remote. I'm pretty sure the remote used to say what the actual TV was called. No, it doesn't. Okay, that's just the serial number for the remote. I apologize, that was a waste of time. Um, but yeah, I've got my 4K player. I've actually got two 4K players. The bottom one doesn't work anymore. Um, it stopped working last year. Uh, which was a really depressing time when that stopped working, but luckily it was during the part of the pandemic where I could actually buy a new one. So instead of buying one that was the exact same model, but 
a slight bit better because they had a newer model version of it. It was like the exact same size and everything. Uh, it. I wanted one that had all uh, regions. So all DVD regions, all Blu-ray regions. So I bought a 4K player that could do that. <laughs> I had to buy from uh, Gaddy Audio in, in the Mount Waverley, I believe it was. Um, free delivery, which is nice, but uh, it was like 400 bucks. But I could afford it, you know, I figured why not, I needed to buy a new one, it was worth the money. Uh, they did have for like $600, the, the bigger one, but um, it, I don't know, the, the only difference really is that the smaller one has Dolby Vision, but the bigger one had better sound. And I don't really mind that it has better sound because sometimes it mostly depends on what you're actually watching. Because like, I, I usually have the volume between 60 to 70 um, on the actual player uh, when I'm watching something. And of course that sounds really loud, like you'd expect it would be, but it really actually isn't. Uh, so unfortunately, it depends on the audio mix. Something like uh, a Dario Argento film is like, you know, mono audio, and it would be like, oh, this is good if you're on like the 65 to 60, to like 68 range. But if you're watching Godzilla vs. Kong, yeah, you best stick to like 55 to 60, because that shit's fucking loud. So it depends on the audio mix, whether it's 5.1, Dolby Atmos, all that kind of jazz. So it usually depends on, you know, how it is. Also depends on if my parents are going to complain about how loud it is. Because they complain about Godzilla, but they don't complain about Saving Private Ryan. And that was fucking loud. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's an all-region player on the top. It's the only one I use. I had a Blu-ray player that was all-region, so I gave that to my parents. So it's now out in the lounge room, uh, which is good for them. They can now watch whatever Blu-rays they want from any Blu-ray or DVD from any region. Because they used to have an old home theater system that would play all region DVDs, but not all region Blu-rays. Now they can do both. 4K is all region, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, the box underneath there is just a kind of placeholder. I think there's stuff in there. I don't really know. Um, but usually I have here what I'm planning to watch next or stuff that I'm in the middle of. So I've got, you know, Buffy and Angel uh, right here. But then my dad is trying to get me to watch Howard's End in a room with you. And I'm trying to watch through the Hasty series of Godzilla. Uh, of course, it's a 5.1 system, so you've got the two outer speakers, this boy, the subwoofer, and you've got two surround sound speakers at the top edges there. Uh, I do have a record player. I don't use it. It plugs into, like, a computer, so um, I don't really care to, you know, play anything. I don't know if it'll actually hook up to my system or not. If it would, that'd be great, because right next to me, is a whole bunch of vinyl records. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that, I guess. Um, yes, I do have a skeleton. I usually call him Jeff. I don't really know what his name is anymore. I usually just go with Jeff. No real reason, to be honest. Okay, maybe Jump Street, but still. Um, then we've got kind of a mess of video game stuff. Again, the Buffy box sets down there, but there's usually Switch stuff or PlayStation stuff, but... That'll depend on if we have people over, or if my brother wants to use a Switch, if my other brother wants to use a Switch, if my other brother wants to use a PlayStation, if my other brother wants to use... You know, I only have the two brothers, as you know, but... Yeah. Um, I don't know, it is what it is. It's mostly Switch and... Oh, shit, what was that? Oh, that was a poster. It's usually Switch and VR stuff. Um, I do also have a uh, Nintendo uh, NES Mini, so... Yeah, I haven't used that for like a, a year or two. I usually only use it when my mates are over. Um, but yeah, we used to only play like Donkey Kong on that anyway. So still, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much this angle of the room. Of course, then you've got over there. Again, this is mostly my dad's section here. You've got a lot of uh, <laughs> vinyl and CDs, which is all my dad's. You even got the Batmobile, which is my dad's. Um... Yeah, oh, that, I just realized Big Bam wasn't meant to be there anymore. I was meant to move that back on the piano. I recently cleaned off the piano, uh, dusted the whole thing, reset it, because I got some new figurines in. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I might have to change that. Usually Big Ben lives here, uh, but I've got some old cameras there, but even Mum has suggested I put them up on the top of the shelf. So, uh, you know, because Dad likes to have some stuff on the piano that is his, because it is his piano. Um... But at the same time, look, hell, if I let him have his fucking uh, music books and, you know, uh, sports records, while I still have my Godzilla book there, but to be fair, that thing is huge. There's nowhere else to put it. Um, but yeah, so, for the most part, this is all his section. Uh, 
yes, there is Mr. Potato Head and uh, Rex from Toy Story. I don't know why they're there either. It's just the thing. Um, but then, of course, you move into uh, some artwork. We do have artwork in here. I know. You'd think that we wouldn't. Uh, but I do have a painting that my girlfriend painted for me a year or two ago. I think it was a year ago. I can't really remember. It's 2020 made my, like, my memory really fucking warped. And it was already bad enough as it was. <laughs> Tell me about it. So she made that, which was really goddamn nice. Um, and we've got some Beatles. and I think that's Bob Dylan. No, it's James Dean. So Beatles and James Dean. They're old pictures that we used to have at the old place. But then we move on to the piano. And this is usually the messiest part of the room. And look, in all fairness, I love the piano. But, uh, you know... Uh, I'd start from top to bottom, but let's go from bottom to top to some degree. So, on the bottom we've got, like, some extra players. We've got an old Foxtel box and our old DVD and VHS player, because we still keep that. I've got a bunch of stands for Blu-rays and stuff. Uh, this is mostly posters. Like, I've got a Twin Peaks print, which is, you know, ever so nice, I think. Um, you know, you've got... The Fog, you've got Shaun of the Dead, I've got some protectors for my Blu-rays. It's usually just a bunch of stuff that we just haven't really found the place for yet, but that's fine. Uh, Mum's little selection of DVDs over here as well. Uh, Ignore Fifty Shades Free, that's actually my mate. So <laughs> I haven't seen her in two years, so I haven't been able to give it back to her. Um, but Mum has a little Blu-ray DVD section there of her own. She likes to go op shopping and buying DVDs for like two bucks, which realistically is a very wise investment. Uh, of course, Switch controls the actual piano, which, yes, it does work. Then we've got where you've obviously put the music books, where I've got a Twin Peaks print and an Evil Dead print. And my Godzilla uh, Showa era criterion selection. And then we've got the top of the shelf. Now, the top of the shelf, uh, I've rearranged recently, actually, because my Collect the Creations video, realistically, I've got kind of dad selection here, which has some musical stuff, you know. I think that's Mo Mozart or Beethoven. Look, we can never remember. It doesn't really matter. Uh, a Gargoyle from France. I've got some pop vinyls, you know, Blade Runner, uh, Always Sunny, John Wick. There's some manga behind it and just realistically books from Japan, including the Snoopy book and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then you've got Robbie the Robot, some alien figures, and two premiums as well. Uh, Shaun of the Dead, that's a little thing from the Everything Blue set. A little Rick, which is from uh, a Christmas gift, actually, from my girlfriend's parents. Um, some more horror figures. Uh, I've got my Akira Lenticular there, which I like to display my premium, so I've kind of wiggled it all around through. Uh, you've got the Evil Dead selection. I've got more Evil Dead figurines coming in the mail because there's always more stuff coming in the goddamn mail. But uh, my Book of the Dead, of course. Um, it's kind of lived on the shelf since I bought it because it's one that everyone suggested because it's made of latex. It's like you should not have it in the sunlight, but there's never direct sunlight through this blind even when the blind is up, and it is up a lot of the time when my mum's home and like it's a, it's a sunny enough day that she'll open it up. Uh, but it's one of those double blinds, so it has the blackout blind, despite it not being blacked out around the side, which I kind of like. Um, and then the, uh, another blind on the inside. Much thinner, but still keeps some sunlight in, but keeps some privacy as well. Um, i uh, got a Mondo The Thing steelbook, and then I've got some free collectibles, plus a Mysterio that my girlfriend got for me for my Christmas or my birthday. I think it was my birthday uh, a year or two ago. But yeah, these are the, this guy's the new one, Jason, um, but I've got, they're the Mezco uh, ones for Jason and Michael Myers, but I've got the retro cloth for Freddy, for Freddy, because I had the pop vinyls, I've got the signed pop vinyl for Jason, and I've got, obviously, the H2O pop vinyl for Michael, and the fingers, uh, what is it, the needle fingers for Freddy, but... I really like detailed figures more, so I do have pops because they're cheap and easy to get, but at the same time, I do like getting really, I don't know, it's a lot of money on to, spent onto them, but I do really like my figurines. Uh, and then, of course, we get to the ottoman and the back side of the wall. So there isn't really much to say about this as it is. Like, the ottoman, it has four pieces. You can move it around. I usually, occasionally of recent, have been starting to move the middle two down so I can get closer to the TV, but... 
it kind of depends on the film or the TV show I'm watching, you know, especially if it's like a DVD quality, it's going to look a little shitter, but if it's a 4K and it's really loud, then it's going to become like, oh no, <laughs> so, yeah, but I always usually have a box of snacks nearby, my Savoy, uh, and a blanket because it usually can get cold, especially for my feet, despite the heater making the room really hot, uh, it is still winter, so it's always good to have be cosy. I uh, do have a little table here, which we have currently three remotes, um, which are the only ones I really use anymore right now, which is good, because I used to have Foxtel, and I used to have the other Blu-ray player, and then there's the TV remote. There's, actually this is the TV remote. I never used to use this until I started using Disney Plus and Netflix on my TV. Um, but I've got another remote over there for the old uh, big 4K player. I've got the TV remote, I've got the 4K remote, which luckily they're both Sony, so they work equivalently. To some, to some degree, of course. Uh, and even the Denon uh, remote, of course, because um, it's convenient to have this around. That's the one that glows in the dark, which is kind of weird. But anyway, um, it's a sturdy little table. It's, it's detailed enough, so it's like not completely flat or anything, but not really modern either. But I like that. It's got like a rustic feel. My mum got it from a op shop, which is cool. So... I think. I think she got it from an op shop. I don't really fucking know. It's old. Look, It looks old, so you'd expect it was. Anyway. Uh, in terms of the wall, uh, you've of course got the final back two speakers. Um, you've got the big, big goddamn frames. These are the two signed frames, pretty much. Uh, the top, you've got Sir Patrick Stewart. You've got Stan Lee uh, in the middle. That's an autograph on my dad's original Spider-Man meets the X-Men comic that he had when he was a teenager, so like an original release. And uh, Mitch Pileggi from um, uh, The X-Files. Um, so yes, Patrick Stewart from Star Trek, we met them all on the same day. Uh, that was a good day back in 2012. Uh, I've got a little thing there, it's the wristband, the Oz Comic Con wristband, so to tell you where we got it from, whatever. Um, and we've got Star Trek Into Darkness. One of my least favourite films, well, it's not one of my least favourite films, but I don't like the film that much anymore. Um, however, I got it with a uh, whole bunch of stuff from a Star Trek bundle that my parents got me when they went overseas a few years back. So they're like, oh, let's get something for each of, you know, one for something for me, something for Noah, something for Sam. They got Sam Game of Thrones. Anyway, <laughs> they got me a Star Trek bundle, gave me a wallet that I used for the next, like, eight years. But... Uh, well, not eight years, because this is a 2014 film, so maybe this is five or six years? It was a long time. Not until I got my new wallet, but still. It's Star Wars, so, you know. Um, it's quite a shift. Uh, it's actually signed by Ben of the Cumberbatch, because my, me and my dad went to Adelaide uh, back in 2014. That was, I think, Supernova in 2014. Uh, and we met Ben of the Cumberbatch, and... We actually got a photo with him, which is in my bedroom. So it's like, that was... We really only went there to meet him because I loved Sherlock at the time. And, you know, this was the only thing I had that I could get signed. Because I'm not the kind of person who gets DVD signed. I do have a few signed. But um, for the most part, if I have a poster, I'll prioritize the poster. Because you can display the poster. So, yeah, I, I, I really dig it. It's a nice looking poster anyway. So, like, that's the benefit of it. It's not a great film, but it's a cool poster and it is still signed by him he even wrote my name it's cute anyway uh moving on to the rest of the posters it's pretty much well they're all mostly my dads from dracula's dad's apocalypse now his dad's and these like original stuff that he got when he was in his early 20s uh the beatles images of course are dads i think they're the reprints he has the originals in a one of his books as well because he has a big beatles collection in the vinyl section over there uh i mentioned metropolis did in casablanca of course, there's With the Beatles as well. Uh, all of those are dads. And even the farthest corner of the door are all dads as well. The one, what is it, pin-up posters, what do you call them? You know, the one long piece posters. You've got Monroe, you've got uh, Bogart, and you've got... you got a guy who dances. I can't remember what the hell his name is. Um, but yeah, got some signed, more signed images... And even the other corner, we've got the other Star Trek side uh, with the signed image of the guy that I can't remember the name of right now. How can I not remember? He's right there. It doesn't really matter. You know who he is. He's Captain Kirk. Uh, and then the other three, uh, we've met all of them. We, we, I, I met all of them as well. I was there when they got signed, which was cool. I think. I definitely was there when Sulu got signed. I don't remember actually being there for 
Salt Lake, George Takai. Uh, I don't think I was really there to see the other two sign it, but I was in the room, you know, I saw it from a distance, which is cool. I think I was doing other things, hanging out with friends, whatever. While Dad would have met his bloody Star Trek idols, which is fair enough, I would too. Um, uh, William Shatner, that's, that's the one. The last one that's Dad's is the fan of the opera, because I actually have the, the um, 2001 A Space Odyssey, I bought that at the Astor Theatre, actually. They had a movie sale thing, it was a movie market, um, and I believe that's, that's also where I got the Terminator 2 poster and the Clockwork Orange poster. Um, the two Escape from New York and They Live, which I also have the, the Fog one, they're Matt Ferguson art, uh, they came in these, uh, sets, these carpenter sets, which are now worth, like, 200 bucks each, uh, of course they have the in condition and whatever, but yeah, so I, I like those films, it's fun to have them pinned on the wall, oh, and yes, of course, there's Cooper, surely you know who Cooper is, <laughs> so, uh, this is my cardboard cutout of uh, Dale Cooper from Twin Peaks, played by Carl McLaughlin. Um, I got it back 2018, I think it was. Uh, but we, we, we did moved here by this stage. So, yeah, it was, it was mid to late 2018. Maybe it was 2019. It may have been 2019. Um, but me and Dad went to mostly because Dad could drive. It was in St Kilda at the Pele Theatre. They had a uh, it was like a talk of the stars of Twin Peaks, so I had a whole bunch of Twin Peaks people. They even had a live Q and A with uh, David Lynch, which is really cool. Um, that especially was quite fun, but uh, I didn't get to ask him anything. But and I didn't get to record it either, which was really annoying. So it's based on my memories now. But I do have have a booklet from the night, and they had a bunch of these cardboard cutouts because they had on the Showtime's uh, website a bunch of the cardboard cutouts. And they had all of them there. Um, and I ended up, you know, it was, cost me 50 bucks and he was already propped up and everything. Obviously, they'd used them on the day and they're like, if you want to buy them, you can take them. But, which is a bit disappointing. I was expecting one that I'd fold out myself. But, uh, yeah, so I picked him up and we walked out the front door. <laughs> and I had so many people staring at me being like, Jesus Christ, I got a cardboard cutter of Dale Cooper. So, it was very fun and tricky to get home. Uh, it was actually like two hours to get home because we put it in the Mini, which he went all the way from front to back of the Mini, um, drove all the way to Heidelberg, where my brother was having an uh, 18th birthday party, and then drove all the way back to uh, to here. So, And then we just kind of left him in the doorway to creep out my mum the next morning, because she didn't know I was going to get it. I didn't know I was going to get it either. So yes, uh, I don't plan to get any more of them, because he's already tricky enough when I've got friends over or people over for a party. I have to put him in the garage, because... Uh, I don't really like people breaking him, so, yeah. He also gets a lot of dust, um, but yeah. he's he's a, For a $50 investment, he's survived me a lot over the past uh, two, three years. Yeah, and he's one of the main attractions of the theatre room, <laughs> despite the shelf here, of course. Um, but yeah, no, as, as overall, that's, that's the whole theatre room. It hasn't really changed much over the past two years, but again, I've rearranged this whole entire shelf, and... I've even displayed new figures in different ways on the piano, so, you know, there's more posters up, there's, pretty sure I had Cooper last time when I made that video, but, you know, yeah, do I have a favourite, um, do I have a favourite, like, f favourite films would be in my David Lynch collection over here, obviously with, uh, uh, Twin Peaks and, um, the uh, Eraserhead, but, uh, my favourite film is Blade Runner 2049, which I have, like, five, six different editions of. So I've got, like, two premiums of it, the HD Zeta and the Film Arena, plus a HMV exclusive, and the 4K and the Blu-ray. Um, and the Blu-ray was the JB exclusive, so I've got at least five different versions of that film. Uh, not to mention I do have all the Blade Runner films, uh, like all the versions of the original Blade Runner. But, yeah, I don't know. Look, sometimes I look at it and it's a bit messy, but it's always at least flat. I don't like having all the extra films popping up the top, but uh, that's just because I keep buying new films and I have to rearrange it. But I usually wait at least three months before I rearrange it again to fit them all in. But yeah, it's not bad. A lot of people like it. When I have, uh, when my brothers have friends over who've never seen it, they're like, holy shit, how many movies do you have? And it's like, 
over a thousand, and that's just the Blu-rays. There's at least another thousand DVDs. Uh, of course, it doesn't just include movies. There's TV shows as well in there, so, uh, yeah. <sighs> but it's good. It's fun. Obviously, I spent a lot of time in here. Um, I spent an equal amount of time in my room, I think, because obviously I'm doing YouTube as well, uh, watching YouTube. I don't like to watch YouTube on the TV in here because usually most people's sound quality is, you know, specific to one microphone. So laptop audio is fine. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, oh, wonderful. More things to buy. So yes. But no, look, I, I, hope, you, I hope you've liked this room. It's It's... Again, it's something I've put a lot of time into. If I were to put a lot more time into it, I'd probably put posters everywhere. But people have even suggested, put posters above the TV. But I'm like, but that would distract you from the movie because all you'd see is the reflections of the fucking posters. So, yeah. And I've got a lot of posters. Trust me, a lot of these premiums come with posters. It's ridiculous. So, yeah. Anyway, um, best we go get some lunch now. And, uh, yeah. Maybe we'll find a film to watch later, if we have the time. Oh, trust me, there's a lot of films. I, I try to watch stuff that I haven't seen before, but trust me, there's a lot on this shelf that I have not seen yet. And I feel like that's like the collector's way, you know. Whether it be that I've seen, like I've bought like this Blu-ray version of Finding Nemo, which is a film I've watched countless times on DVD, and I haven't watched the Blu-ray yet, because I just, I just wanted to have it and got it for a good price and didn't want to, haven't had the time to watch it yet. Actually, I think I have watched that version of Fire anyway. Anyway, cool. Um, yeah. And out the sliding door we go.